Empires of Mesopotamia by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. The first empire we are going to talk about are the Assyrians. And their famous ruler was Sargon II. He took his name to honor the Akkadian king, Sargon. And they rose to power again around 900 BC. They had been in power around the 15th and 16th centuries, but they weren't as powerful as they become during the 900s. Their last capital city was called Nineveh in the north, and it was near the Tigris River. They also had three other capital cities. One of the other ones was Assur, A-S-S-U-R. They were masters of war, some of the best. And they perfected the use of horses in combat, iron weapons, and siege weapons. Now, think about it. Most people are fighting on the ground, and you have these huge animals coming at you. And people riding on them very fast. It was intimidating, and they were masters of riding these beasts. We know them now as horses. Iron weapons are huge, and please make a note that they are lighter and stronger than bronze. Lighter and stronger than bronze. Now these siege weapons they created were huge, very big. They were powerful things like a battering ram. We still use battering rams today to take down doors. They used them to knock down the walls of Mesopotamia. And they created these movable towers. Anybody who's seen Lord of the Rings, specifically Return of the King, has seen movable towers in action when the orgs tried to get over the walls and defeat the humans. The Assyrian Empire stretched from the Nile River across the Fertile Crescent and to the Gulf, the Persian Gulf. That's a pretty big empire. And what it shows is their ability for conquest. They were ruthless and powerful in battle, and few people had the, the ability to stand up to them. And as I just said, they're ruthless, and they made conquered people even leave their land. If they refused, they cut off their heads. That's gross. They built some of the earliest aqueducts to give their empire water. And some stretched as long as 30 miles. 30 miles is longer than what it would take to get to Boston. That's pretty impressive, don't you think? They made huge bas reliefs. You could also say that they're known as ba or just reliefs. And they're very realistic. In fact, here's an example of one now. This is a bas relief of an Assyrian king. It combines the head of a, the head of a human and the body of an animal. Because they believed in duality, which means the combination of two things. We're going to create our own version of those later this week. They created huge libraries and left written records for us to learn from. But when you're a master of war, you tend to make enemies, especially when you're cutting off people's heads. People don't like that. And in 612 BC, Notice that it is a specific date, unlike with their rise to power, which took place around 900. They're defeated by the Scythians, 
Medes, and Babylonians. And I'd like you to write in the name also, Chaldeans. C-H-A-L-D-E-A-N-S. Chaldeans. Now please take a moment and highlight all of the words in bold. And make sure that you've added in that iron is lighter and stronger than bronze. And down here, please write in that the Chaldeans were also involved. Now, once all of these civilizations got together, they formed a new civilization, a new empire that would redefine and honor one of the civilizations we've already talked around. Can you guess what it is? If you said Babylon, you're correct. The Neo-Babylonians. Now, once the Chaldeans helped defeat the Assyrians and took control of the Assyrian Empire, and this include the city of Babylon, they formed a new civilization, the Neo-Babylon. Neo means new. Their famous ruler was known as Nebuchadnezzar II, and he was king of Babylon. Those of you who have seen the movie The Matrix would know that Morpheus's ship is called the Nebuchadnezzar, and that's named after Nebuchadnezzar of Neo-Babylon. Bet you didn't know that. Now, he wanted to reclaim the glory of Hammurabi's empire that was destroyed in, six, in 600 by the Assyrians. Nebuchadnezzar rebuilt the city, and they built massive learning centers. They were skilled in astronomy and mathematics. They charted the path of the stars. They measured the seven-day week and the length of a year. And their most famous structure was known as the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. It was a beautiful garden, and in fact, it's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Here's a picture of it now. Now, obviously, this is a recreation because no pictures of it have survived. No good pictures, at least. And, well, it was destroyed, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, Nebuchadnezzar built it for his wife. It's a pretty nice gift. And it was, but it was sadly destroyed in the first century CE, that's common era, by an earthquake. And he built it for her as a wedding gift. Please make a note of this. Because she came from a very fertile land. And since she was homesick, he wanted to make her feel more at home. He put up massive walls to help rebuild the city and protect it. But the success was very short-lived, and in 539 BC, once again, we're very specific, 539, the Neo-Babylonian Empire was conquered by the Persians. Yes, the mighty Persians finally rear their heads. Please take a moment and highlight every word that is in bold. And please make sure you spell Nebuchadnezzar correctly. Now, also add in the date from which the, Chaldean, the uh, Neo-Babylonians were destroyed. One final note before you go. The seven wonders of the ancient world include many, th uh, many of the things we'll cover this year. But perhaps the one you know the best is the Pyramid of Giza, known as the Great Pyramid. And it is the only one that is still around today. Please make a note of that. The end.